Hello, White Sox fans and baseball fans alike out there. This is Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I'm here today with another White Sox weekly recap for you. White Sox had another good week. We went 4-2 and two this week. Not too bad. I mean, you know, that's 667 baseball. You can't really complain about that. Um, we played uh, Cleveland. And we played, um, who else did we play? I think we played Texas. Was Texas in there? I think maybe Texas was in there somewhere. And, um, and we also played Detroit. So, anyway, let's get into the recap. Uh, we'll start with the May 1st game, which was yesterday's game as of this recording, where we played the Cleveland Indians. And uh, this matchup was Tristan McKenzie on the mound for Cleveland against Lance Lynn, who was coming off the IL. So it would be interesting to see how he did. Turns out he did quite well. In the bottom of the second, uh, McKenzie of Cleveland walked four batters, which includes walking in a run. And the fourth of those was uh, Lurie Garcia. So the Sox were up one nothing at that point with the bases still loaded. And then um, that was followed by T.A., Timmy Anderson, going deep, hitting the grand slam and putting the White Sox up 5 nothing really quick in the game. The bottom of the third, McKenzie was already out. He was relieved by Phil Matan, and he came on in relief of McKenzie, who only went Two innings, allowed one hit, five walks, six strikeouts, and five earned runs. So in the top of the fourth, Cleveland scores two runs despite two base running gaffes. Uh, a shallow fly ball by Yu Chang with the bases loaded uh, dropped in front of um, in front of our main man there, uh, Lewis Robert, and. That scored two runs. Then Jake Bauer tried to advance from third, from two third from first, and was thrown out. But, um, and then earlier in the uh, sequence, there was a base running error by, or a base running mistake <coughs> by their, uh, their third baseman. Um, he didn't touch second, and so he had to go back and touch second. Otherwise, he would have scored. But, that didn't really come back to haunt him because he ended up scoring. Ramirez. So, anyway. So, at this point, it's 5-2 White Sox. Then, in the bottom of the fourth, Garcia doubles two runs home from first and second with one out. Uh, the runner on first was Billy Hamilton, who came in to pinch run for Jake Lamb, who had started the game in left field for the White Sox. So, now it's 7-2 White Sox. Top of the fifth, Austin Hedges hits a solo home run, and it's 7-3. Now, the home run was probably assisted by the fact that there was a serious jet stream going out to left field. But anyway, it was still a home run. It still counts in the books as a home run for him. Good news for him. So, um, Bottom of the fifth, Moncada single. The Bray was hit by a pitch, but after two out, Grandall walked. Loaded the bases, but Hamilton grounded out to end the threat. It's still 7-3 after five. Lynn left after five innings pitched, and he was relieved by Kopech, who also went three innings, and uh, three really good innings. Then Bummer came on in the ninth and pitched a clean inning. The Sox win this one 7-3. So that was yesterday's game. I gotta flip through. I gotta flip through my notes here. So let's uh, let's go to yeah. All right. So uh, on April, what was it? April thirtieth. Yeah, April thirtieth. We also played the Indians, and uh, this was Bieber versus Keuchel. Uh, Cle for Cleveland, Ramirez was 2 for 4 with a home run and 3 RBIs. Rosario was 1 for 3 with an RBI. Um, 
And Bieber went six innings pitched, getting the win. And seven hits allowed, three earned runs, 11 strikeouts. For Chicago, Anderson was two for five with an RBI. Lewis Robert was two for four with an RBI. Mercedes was one for four. And Keuchel went six innings, pitched, uh, gave up four hits and four earned runs, and he ended up getting the loss in that game. So the White Sox lost that game 5-3. And that takes us to April 29th. We're going back in time. So, April 29th, the first game of the um, series. Or wait, here we go. The first game of the series was um, Mize. And this was the Tigers. The first game was Mize versus Rodon. Uh, Mize ended up pitching six innings, four hits, three earned runs. No Tigers had anything notable offensively going on for him. The White Sox, Collins, Zach Collins was one for one. Garcia was one for two with two RBIs. And Rodon, again, was very stellar on the mound. He pitched six innings, allowed two hits, one earned run, and 12 strikeouts. And by the way, um, I will be putting up since this is the end of the uh, end of the month. I will be putting up um, the White Sox stats stats on various White Sox players, as you probably noticed going across the bottom of the screen throughout the video. So um, that that brings us to the first game of the series on the the twenty uh, ninth or the the second game. I don't know where I am. So the second game of the series was Boyd versus Cease on that doubleheader. And this was a doubleheader because the day before it had gotten rained out. So the Tigers pitched Boyd, and uh, he got the loss. He went only one inning, allowed three hits and two earned runs. And Fulmer did two innings in relief with four hits allowed, two walks, and two earned runs. And again, no Detroit player did anything notable with the bat. The, uh, the White Sox had Moncada go two for three with a home run and three RBIs in this particular game. Abreu was two for four with two RBIs. Vaughn was three for four. And Madrigal was three for three with an RBI. Uh, this was Cease's first five-plus inning game of the year. And it was a complete game because it was part of a uh, doubleheader. And the way Major League Baseball is doing doubleheaders this year is they are all seven innings. And he went seven innings, allowed three hits, and no earned runs. April 28th, as I just mentioned, was uh, rained out. And then that brings us to April 27th. And this was also versus the Tigers. And this was uh, Urena versus Giolito. Um, for the uh, Tigers, Cabrera was two for four with a home run and one RBI. Scope was one for four with a, with a home run and one RBI. And Goodrum was one for four with a home run and two RBIs. Urena got the win, ended up getting the win, and he went seven innings, allowed seven hits, three walks, and one earned run. And Giovanni Soto got the uh, save in relief. He went one inning pitched and no earned run. For the White Sox, Eaton was two for five, Mercedes was two for four, Lamb was one for two, and um, and there were no official. There were also were no official uh, RBIs for the White Sox because the all of our runs scored on Tiger errors. The Tigers had five errors in this game. Giolito went six and two-thirds innings, allowed five hits, struck out seven, and four earned runs. And we lose that game five to two. So this brings us to the um, this brings us to the Sunday game where we played Texas, which was the lone game this week that we played Texas. Um, and this was Kohei Erehara on the mound for Texas against uh, Michael Kopech. 
and uh, the sun was shining, but it was 43 degrees at game time for this particular game. Um, Kopech, it's um, is very notable here that in this particular game that he started, he faced 13, no, 18, bat he faced 18 batters and he struck out 10 of them. So he struck out more than half of the batters he faced in this game. So let's go through this one. Bottom of the first, Tim Anderson led off with uh, his first walk of 2021. And uh, and he was, uh, and then he was doubled off first on a line drive out by Eaton. But Moncada walked, Mercedes walked, Wait, Moncada walked, Jose Abreu blasted a two-run home run, and it was 2 nothing Sox. Then Mercedes walked. Then Luis Robert walked. There was an infield single by Zach Collins with the bases loaded, two out. Or that made the bases loaded, two out. And then Lurie Garcia flew out to Gallo to end the first. So it was 2 nothing after uh, the first inning. Top of the second, Dahl hit a one-out home run to right field, and that made it 2-1 to one White Sox. Bottom of the second, Madrigal singled, and uh, a misplay by Gallo put Madrigal on second base. Anderson doubled Madrigal home, and it's 3-1 to one White Sox. Eaton triples Anderson home, and it's 4-1 to one White Sox. Moncada popped out. Abreu flew out, sack fly to right, and it's 5-1 Sox with two out. Mercedes infield single, and then Lewis Robert flew out. It's 5-1 after two innings. White Sox ahead. Bottom of the third, uh, Brett DeGus, DeGus relieves Arahara, who did not have a good outing. He usually does. He's a lot better than this usually, uh, but he had a particularly bad outing on this, on this day. Uh, leadoff walk by Zach Collins, single by Lurie Garcia, runners at first and second, no out. Wild pitch by DeGus advances runners to second and third. Madrigal triples both runners home and it's 7-1 White Sox. And this is the second triple of the game for the White Sox, which is also uncharacteristic of them based on past years. Eaton bunts Madrigal home on Delayed squeeze, and it's 8-1 White Sox with two out. Madrigal walked. Abreu singled, two on, two out. Mercedes struck out on another outside pitch, and uh, it was 8-1 White Sox after three. Bottom of the fourth, Brett Martin is on to relieve uh, DeGus. The White Sox threatened in the fourth, but they failed to score. In the top of the sixth, Jonathan Stiver comes on for Kopech, but he was seriously ineffective. He didn't, I don't think he got any outs before he left. Calhoun singled, Kiner Falefa singles, runners are at first and second, Gallo singles, bases are loaded, no out. Um, Nate Lowe singles a run home, the bases are loaded, it's 8-2 socks, and then Crochet came on to relieve Stiver. So yeah, he was very ineffective that day. Top of the sixth uh, continued. We're going on with the top of the sixth here. Um, Garcia grounded out to third base. A run scores. It's 8-3 Sox lead. Dahl pops out, and there's two out. Solak gets an infield hit back to Crochet. It's 8-4 White Sox, and that was a high bouncer. Crochet's uh, throw to first was late. And then Holt struck out. So it ends 8-4 White Sox after six. We go to the uh, bottom of the, or after uh, five and a half, we go to the bottom of the sixth. Josh Spores is on for Texas. Zach Collins got his third infield hit of the game, but nothing else happened. And it's notable because Collins was having a bad year coming in, too. Bottom of the eighth, Taylor Hearn is on to pitch for Texas. Nothing much happens. Top of the ninth, Ruiz is on for Crochet. So Sox are still leading 8-4. Texas fails to score, and the White Sox go on um, to win that game 8-4. And at this point, this put the Sox at 12-9. Now, overall on the season, the White Sox are 15-11 and 
And here is the standings board. This is the updated standings board through May 1st games. And so you can see the White Sox are not doing too badly. Notice that record, 15-11, 577 win percentage. Now, just in case you don't know, a 577 win percentage projects to 93 wins on the year. Would you take that? Yeah, I would take that. So I think the White Sox are in good shape. I like where we are. Kansas City 16 and 9, but it, that's just early season, you know, jumping out, you know, jumping the gun. They, uh, I don't think they can maintain that throughout the season. I'm not saying Kansas City won't be good. I don't, I'm not saying Kansas City won't be a challenge for us, but what I am saying is Kansas City is not going to be a 640 win percentage team. Um, so I think that we're going to be there all year. Now, Minnesota, and the same thing with Minnesota. Minnesota is 9 and 16, but do I think that Minnesota is a 360 win percentage team? No, they're not. They're going to come back and they're going to, they're going to get their footing at some point. And they're going to also um, start to play better baseball. Um, so that is also something you want to keep in mind. But I like where we are. I see a lot of stuff on Twitter. People saying stuff like, Lurie Garcia shouldn't be playing um, more than, um, than Madrigal. And Lamb shouldn't be playing more than... Um, uh, than Vaughn in left field. Now, first of all, I'm going to respectfully disagree with the last statement that um, definitely Vaughn should be playing more than than uh, Lamb in left because um, neither one of them is having a very good year. So I say keep playing both of them and see who breaks out on top. Now. If I had my druthers, yes, I would play Madrigal at second base more than La Russa is playing um, Madrigal at second base, and I would play Lurie Garcia less. But, as we just saw in the May 1st game, when I recapped the May 1st game, Lurie Garcia had a pretty good game. And, let's remember, this is Tony La Russa running the team, and he has him at 15-11. and 11. And let's remember, that's a 93-win pace. So, I'm going to defer to Tony La Russa and assume that he knows what he's doing. So, I like where we are. I, I'm not worried. Like Giolito, he had a rough outing or two, you know. I'm not worried about it. I think we're, in the, we're right where we want to be. I think we're doing what we should be doing. In fact... I think we're one of the few teams in the Central that are doing what we should be doing. Kansas City is playing way over their heads. Minnesota is playing way worse than they probably really are. Cleveland is probably even playing a little worse than they really are. Uh, so Detroit is the only other team that's doing what they should be doing because they are legitimately bad. So I like where we are. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Give me a thumbs up on the video if you like these recaps. Do them every Sunday. Every Sunday we're going to have a White Sox recap of their week. So that's it for me right now, though. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.